We just cut, froze again. Third stream of this fall or this SWCL championship game between Crane and Purdy. We're in the bottom of the ninth inning with one ball, one strike. A count to Isaiah Smith as he can look to get on base and in this game here in the bottom of the ninth inning. The pitch swung on a miss and it is strike two to Isaiah Smith. He wants to extend the inning or extend the game to Chase Conrad. Just gotta just gotta find the outfield. The pitch to Smith. Swung on in a ground ball. Past the shortstop for a base hit. Isaiah Smith is going to stop there at first. There at first base. And it's going to be up to Chase Conrad to hopefully walk off these crane pirates. Let's see if he can become the walk-off hero tonight. Two outs here in the bottom of the ninth inning. check. He's back in safely. So currently sitting here in the bottom of the ninth inning between Crane and Purdy. Two outs here in the inning. A check on the runner, but he's back in safely. So once again, we are in the bottom of the ninth inning between Crane and Purdy of this 2020 SWCL championship game. Pirates really want that, really want their second straight SWCL championship, second consecutive SWCL championship in back to back years. The pitch, runner goes, there goes the throw. Safe, they're at, they're at second base. Let's see if Conrad can drive him in. Isaiah Smith does have speed on the bases. They're going to intentionally pass to Chase, Con to Chase Conrad. And that's going to bring up Isaac Robinson to the plate. And he could be the walk-off hero tonight. Isaac Robinson is going to be the man who could be tasked to walk off the Crane Pirates. And give them their give them their second straight SWCL win in back to back years. The pitch to Robinson swung on in a fly ball. Is it gonna carry? Is it gonna drop? And it's going to be caught, and we play on. We're going to the 10th. It is a 2-2 tie between C Crane and Purdy.
Ezekiel Garcia will lead off the top half of the tenth inning of play. It's starting to get late, as we could have, as we're, let's say we're about four innings away from playing two complete high school baseball games. So Ezekiel Garcia is at the plate for the Eagles. It's the first pitch. It's going to be outside, and it's 1-0. So the Pirates have had some golden opportunities to end this game in the bottom half of the inning, in the bottom halves of their inning. But they have left the winning run on base. In the bottom of the seventh, eighth, and ninth innings of play, we are in the tenth. Here's a pitch from... Looks like Wyatt, or pardon me, Zane Compton is the man on the mound for the Pirates as he relieves Koi Esri. Send this game to the bottom of the tenth. The pitch swung on in a fly ball. Foul territory, set steal. Won't get it for foul for a foul ball. It's two and two. The count. We are in the top half of the tenth inning. So we played a full MLB game. So we're pretty much in the extra inning parts of the game if we're playing Major League Baseball or most, mostly professional baseball. We're in, the, we're in extra innings. The ball gets away and it is three balls, two strikes to count to Ezekiel Garcia. Crane defense so far has looked good tonight. Offense has been put to sleep. Neither team has scored. That's going to be a base hit. That's going to be deep. But it will be caught there by, I think it looks like that was Wyatt Howard who caught that ball. So there's one out here in the top of the 10th inning. Brings up Alexis Saldaba to the plate. And what a game this has been between Crane and Purdy. One out here in the inning. The pitch to Aldaba is going to be a strike at 01. Swung on, and that's going to be a fly ball. And that will be another fly out for out number two here in the bottom of inning number, or pardon me, the top of inning number 10. So the Pirates are one out away from getting another chance to walk off the Purdy Eagles. Two outs in the inning. The pitch from Compton. Strike says he only played umpire. It is nothing in one. 0-1 oh, the count to Boston Gates, the final hope for Purdy here in the 10th. Here's the pitch. Outside, and it is 1-1. Nothing in one, the count to Boston Gates. Here's the pitch from Compton. Outside, and it is 2-1, the count. Two balls, a strike. The count to Boston Gates. Here's the pitch from Compton, and the ball gets away, but there's nobody on base. Three balls, a strike. The count to Boston Gates. 39-17, Joplin leads Branson so far. So three balls, a strike. Two outs here in the inning. Here's the pitch from Compton. Strike says the home plate umpire. It's three balls, two strikes. Purdy doesn't want to go down. Crane doesn't, doesn't want to go down. These two teams are battling here in the top half of the 10th inning. The pitch. And the ball gets is going to be a walk to Boston Gates. It sends up the batter in Jake Brown to the plate. <laughs>
Purdy's had base runners, Crane's had base runners, but none of them have been able to capitalize tonight. Coach Ryan Harmon looks like he's so he will get the time as he will talk to Zane Compton to he's going to tell him how to pitch to or tell him what to throw to Jake Brown. Here in the top half of the 10th inning. So the end or the meeting comes to a close. One team has to lose. One team's got to win. So we're currently in the 10th inning of play. Getting close to eight to nine o'clock here on this Friday evening between Crane and Purdy. Here's the pitch. Swung on and a fly ball. Foul territory. Steele will have it for out number three, and that will send this game on to the bottom of the 10th inning. Let's see if the Pirates can end it and claim their S and claim their second straight SWCL championship in back-to-back -back years. So we head on to the 10th, 2-2 between Crane and Purdy. Zane Compton, the batter, who started the game at shortstop today, came in to pitch. Here in the bottom of the 10th inning for Crane, it is a 2-2 tie between Crane and Purdy. The pitch is going to float in there for a strike, and it's 0-1 the count. The next pitch <clears throat> will be a ball 1-1, one, one, the count to Zane Compton. The next pitch swung on and a ground ball to the shortstop. Compton's speed, but he's going to be out there at first. And there's one away. Blake that brings up Blake Evans back to the plate. He takes over for Hayden Shepard. And let's see if they can get him on base. Pirates have had some base runners. The pitch. Check the swing, and it is 1 0 the count to Blake Evans. Currently sitting here in the bottom of the 10th inning between Crane and Purdy. One ball, one strike. The count to Blake Evans. Here's the pitch to Evans. Swing and a miss, and it's one and two the count to Blake Evans. One and two the count to Blake Evans. Here's the pitch. Swung on and fouled as he stays alive, and it's one and two.
One and two, the count to Evans. Both seasons for Crane and Purdy will come to a close. Win or lose. That will be a foul ball. We're doing it again. One ball, two strikes, the count to Blake Evans. Here in the bottom half of the tenth inning of play, Here's the pitch. Oh, strike three. Evans did not like the calls. He looks at strike three as he goes back to the dugout with two outs here in the inning. That will send up Wyatt Howard to the plate. Number 30, Wyatt Howard. Howard the batter for Crane. Crane's gonna have gonna have to get a base runner. They need some base runners. Ash Grove's coming back up against against Marionville. It's 38-28 in the fourth quarter. We're in the 10th inning of play, the bottom of the 10th for Crane. That first pitch is a strike at 0-1. Here's the pitch to Howard. Outside and it is 1-1. Howard can extend the inning to Wesley Clark. They need a base runner. The pitch is going to be foul, and it's 1-2. One, one ball, two strikes to count to Wyatt Howard. Two away here in the inning. Here's the pitch. Downstairs, and it is 2-2 two and two as he watches it. At two balls and two strikes. Two and two the count. Here's the pitch. Swung on, and that's going to be a base hit there from Wyatt Howard as he is going to be rounding, or as he will stop there at first base. And let's see if Wesley Clark can keep the inning alive. That's a ground ball there from Wyatt Howard as the winning runs back on base again. Let's see if Coach Brian Harmon can say let's end it here in the 10th. Pirates have not used a pinch runner tonight. The pitch to Clark is going to be a ball 1-0. and oh. one and oh the count to Wesley Clark. Swung on and fouled back 1-1. One, one. In the third quarter, as it's 49-0 Nixa over Carl Junction. That Nixa team is good. Only one loss last week to, to Webb City. The pitch runner goes as it's a fly ball. And it will be caught for out number three. And that will send this game on to the top of the 11th inning. It is 2-2 between Crane and Purdy. We're in the top of the 11th inning here in Ozark here at U.S. Ballpark. Ocel Aldava is the batter for the Purdy Eagles. 
they're going to try to put away the Crane Pirates here in the inning. Here in the top of the 11th inning. It's getting late. The pitch from Compton is going to be a ball at 1-0. and So these two teams have scratched and clawed at each other. Crane has had opportunities to, to end it. Two and zero the count to Osiel Aldava. Here's the pitch from Compton. Swung on and a ground ball foul. Two balls and a strike. The count to Osiel Aldava. Here's the pitch from Compton. Swung on and a ground ball. Right, oh, it's going to be past the second baseman for a base hit. And and Purdy will have their first base runner here in the, in the 11th inning. Brings up the batter and Clay Henderson to the plate. It's late here in the game. We're in the 11th inning of play. Here's the pitch. A little bunt. Right to the third baseman. Throw on to first. Oh, it's going to be away. That could score a run in. That's going to give Purdy the lead. And that's going to make it now a 3-2 Purdy lead here in the top of the 11th inning. As Crane threw the ball away. And now they're going to have to scratch and claw to get that run back and hopefully get two runs back if they want to win this game. They may be pulling, pulling Compton out of the game. What a wild game that we have tonight here at U.S. Ballpark here in Ozark. Let's see, they may, let's see if they'll keep Compton on, on the mound tonight. Here in the top of the 11th inning, it's 3-2 Purdy. This game has been long, is a long game. This, these two teams have, have been going at it tonight. Purdy has a lead back, it's 3-2, as they have scored their runs in the, so they scored their run, runs in the first, fifth, or pardon me, first, third, and 11th innings. Crane scored their runs in the first and fifth innings of play. So they will keep Zane Compton on the mound to hopefully get the first three outs of the game. But they have, but he has allowed a run to score. So they're going to have to have base runners on. He's going to be facing Andreas Saldaba on the mound. This has been a long game tonight between Crane and Purdy. We're here in the 11th inning. Purdy has the lead. It's 3-2. The pitch from Compton is upstairs, and it is 1-0 the count to Zane Compton. One zero the count to Compton. Here's the pitch, swung on and a ground ball, right to the shortstop. Throw on to first. Do they get him? They get him out there at there at first, but another run scores, making it four two Purdy. So Crane in the bottom of the eleventh inning is going to have to scratch and claw and get three runs to put away the Eagles. What a crazy game it's been tonight. as these two teams are desperately wanting to take home the SWCL championship. The pitch from Compton swung on and missed, and it is nothing and one there to Travis Hughes. No men on base for Purdy. 
the pitch swung on and fouled back and it's 0-2 Pirates trail just by two here in the top of the 11th inning. Here's the pitch outside, and it is one and two. One ball, two strikes account to Travis Hughes. Here's the pitch from Compton. Swing and a miss, and Hughes is down on strikes. That will send up the batter in nine, JJ Felipe. But two outs here in the top of the 11th inning. Purdy has already scored two runs in the top half of the 11th. This Pirates team has been pesky. The pitch upstairs, and it is 1 0. So we will see the bottom of the 11th inning no matter what, because Purdy has scored two runs. So Crane's going to have to answer back the pitch. 2-0 the count to J.J. Felipe. But there are no men on base. 4-2 in favor of Purdy. Here's the pitch. Strike says the all point umpire. It is 2-1 the count. We are in the... Bottom of the 11th inning. The pitch from Compton. Swung on and fouled. Two balls, two strikes to count to J.J. Felipe. Two and two the count, so the Pirates will have one more chance since Purdy has taken the lead. The pitch inside on him, and it's three and two the count. Three balls, two strikes to count to J.J. Felipe. Here's the pitch. And a walk will be issued there to J.J. Felipe. Let's we'll see if the Pirates can keep it to <laughs> keep a minimum, keep it to two runs in, or a minimum of two runs here in the top of the 11th inning and send it to the bottom of the 11th inning where they will need two to retie it and then three to win it. The pitch. Strikes as the home plate umpire. It is nothing and one the count there to Ezekiel Garcia. Final score as it is now 7 4 Astros defeat the Braves and they will force a game seven of the ALCS. Did they get him? Oh, they didn't get him there at second base. We're in the top of the 11th inning. It's 4-2 Crane, or 4-2 Purdy, excuse me. So Ezekiel Garcia will have his at-bat stay alive. Here's the pitch. Swung on in a little ground ball. Throw on to first. And we're going to send this game on to the bottom of the 11th inning. It is a 4-2 Purdy lead. Last chance coming up for the Crane Pirates. Seth Steele, the batter, here in the bottom of the 11th inning. It's 4-2 Purdy. 
Let's see if the Pirates, they have one more chance if they want to claim the SWCL championship. They're down just by two runs here in the game. They've out hit Purdy by us by three runs, or by eight runs. Eight runs, but they trail 4 2. The pitch to Steele. It's a strike 0 1. So Crane has out hit Purdy 8 to 5. Crane has committed three errors tonight. They have not scored since the fifth inning of play. The pitch, swing and a miss, and steal is behind one and two. Patience at the plate. Patience at the plate for the Pirates. One ball, two strikes to count. Here's the pitch. Watches it, and it's going to be two and two the count to Seth Steele. Pirates have had golden opportunities in the in innings. Oh, is Seth Steele is down on strikes. We got one out here in the bottom of the 11th inning. Up for, that's going to be up to Coy Essery to get on base. He has had base hits tonight. So Smith will represent the tying run if Esri is able to get on base. One out here in the inning. The pitch watches it outside, and it is 1-0. Around 9.15 here on this Friday evening. The pitch. Strike, says the home plate umpire, 1-1. One, one. The count to Coy Esri. Crane trails it 4 2 as Esri watches that one, two balls and a strike. Here's the pitch. Strike says the home plate umpire now two and two. Here to Coy Esri. Two balls, two strikes, one out. Here's the pitch. Swung on in a fly ball. This should. And it's going to be caught there by the left fielder. And the Pirates are down to their final out of the game. That brings up Isaiah Smith to the plate. So if he is to get on base, he will be, he will represent the tying run. He will represent, or no, Chase Connor will represent the tying run at the plate if Isaiah Smith was to get on base. The top of the order has been has come up clutch in some moments as Isaiah Smith fouls that one off for strike one. Nothing had won the count to Isaiah Smith. Four to two here in the bottom of the 11th inning. Here's the pitch. Swung on and fouled back. And the Pirates are down to their final strike. Nothing into the count to Isaiah Smith. The pitch. Watches that one. It's one ball, two strikes. The count to Isaiah Smith. <clears throat> Here in the bottom of the 11th inning, the Purdy Eagles are one strike away from, the, from their second SWCL championship. The pitch swung on and fouled back again as Isaiah Smith is staying alive. Here in the eleventh inning of play, one ball, two strikes to count to Isaiah Smith. The pitch swung on and a ground ball. This is going to be a base hit there for Isaiah Smith. He's going to be passing first. He's going to be pass, passing second base. He's going to stop there at third for a triple here with two outs here in the inning. That's going to send up Chase Conrad as he will represent the tying run at the, there at the plate. Let's see if he can get on base. Final score coming from, from the Joplin-Branson game as Joplin 
defeats Branson by a score of 49-24. Two outs here in the inning. Chase Conrad on or at the plate. The pitch is going to be a strike at 0-1 there to Chase Conrad. Nothing in one to count. There to Chase Conrad. The pitch swung on in a little ground ball. To the shortstop. Throw to first. And he is going to be safe. And that is going to score a run. And that's going to give Crane a run back, making it 4-3 Purdy. And that's going to be up to Isaac Robinson as a tying run is on base. Robinson represents the winning run on base. So we have two outs as Purdy is starting to starting to kind of kick the ball around here in the bottom of the 11th inning. So they want to be careful. Crane has already had 10 hits tonight. Purdy has had five tonight. And they balk as that will move Conrad there to second base. Crazy game tonight between Crane and Purdy. Currently in the SWCL title game. This Crane team will not go away. Pirates are down to their final out of the game. It's 4-3 Purdy excuse me, over Crane. Conrad represents the tying run. Robinson the winning run. Swung on and a foul tip. Strike one there to Wesley. There to Isaac Robinson. Pirates can walk it off here. Here's the pitch. Swung on and missed, and it's strike two, and the Pirates are down to their final strike again. Pirates have the tying run on base, the winning run at the plate. They just got to put the winning run on there on first, or put the winning run on base. Isaac Robinson has not had a hit tonight. And the pitch swung on, and that's going to be a base hit there for, for Isaac Robinson. That reties the game back up. Isaac Robinson is going to be passing first. He's passed. And he's going to be there for a double. And it's going to be up to Zane Compton as he could be the walk-off hero here in the bottom of the 11th inning. It's 4-4 between Crane and Purdy. I'm going, to, I'm going to give this game just like a Floyd Mayweather, Conor McGregor kind of game. Just punches. Just, just throwing punches at each other. Just throwing punches at each other. That's what Crane and Purdy are like, just like a Floyd Mayweather, Floyd Mayweather, Conor McGregor fight, a Lakers Clippers game, a Cubs Cardinals game, Yankees Red Sox game, Dodgers Giants game. As they intentionally pass there to Zane Compton, so Blake Evans will be the man to bring him home. Two outs here in the inning. Here in the bottom of the eleventh inning, Pirates are have tied it up here in the bottom of the 11th. The winning run is in scoring position for the Pirates. With two outs here in the inning. Blake Evans is your man at the plate. He can end it right here with one swing of the bat. Let's see what he can do. The pitch swung on and fouled for strike one. It's nothing in one to count to Blake Evans. Crane has had 11 hits so far. This Crane team says we are not going down without a fight. Here's the pitch to Evans. Swung on and fouled again, strike two. Oh and two the count to Blake Evans here in the bottom of the eleventh inning. This crane team will not go away. They just won't go away. The pitch swung on and missed as we play on. We're headed on to the twelfth inning of play. It's a four four tie between Crane and Purdy.
Welcome back to U.S. Ballpark. We are in the top of the 12th inning. So we're in the top of the 12th inning between Crane and Purdy. It is a 4-4 tie between Purdy and Crane. The first pitch is going to be a little blooper. Smith catches it for out number one. Quickly and quietly. We got out number one, and we got one out here. Sends up Boston Gates to the plate. This Purdy team has scratched and clawed. And this game is just like a Floyd Mayweather, Conor McGregor. Sounds like a Floyd Mayweather, Conor McGregor fight. If you're going to ask me, just two teams, or just both Purdy and Crane trading punches with each other. Those fights just go on for ages. Also reminds me of the Yankees, of how their Yankees and Red Sox can have had multiple battles throughout the years of their rivalry. 4-4 our score in favor, or between Crane and Purdy in the top of the 12th. Purdy scored their two runs to regain the lead in the bottom or in the top of the 12th inning. Then Crane answered right back to retie the game. Crane has had 11 hits. Swung on. That's going to be a base hit there for Boston Gates. They're going to hold him there at first. And that will send up the batter in two, Jake, Brown. Jake Brown to the plate with one out here in the inning. One out here in the inning for Jake Brown. Crane has put up 11 hits on the, on the scoreboard. We are tied up at four. A pitch swung on and fouled. Final score from the Bolivar Kickapoo game as Bolivar defeats Kickapoo by a score of 34 14. Nothing in one the count in our game. It's a 4 4 tie with nothing, and it's nothing in one with one out to Jake Brown. The pitch downstairs, and it is 1 1. One ball, one strike the count to Jake Brown. One out in the inning. Here's the pitch outside, and it is two and one. Two balls, a strike, one out. We're in the bottom of the 12th inning. The pitch swung on, and that is going to be a base hit there for Jake Brown. That's going to put runners at Sec at first and second base for OCL Aldaba with one out here in the inning. This could set up a double play ball for Crane. They can get a scoreless inning and send this game on to the 12th. But Crane will need some base hits. One out here in the inning. Here's the pitch. Swung on and fouled for strike one. We're currently in the bottom of the 12th inning, or pardon me, the top of the 12th inning. With one out here in the inning. The pitch swung on and fouled for strike two. Let's see if Compton can slam the door on OCL Aldaba. And also put away Clay Henderson as well. Here's the pitch from Compton. Swung on and a ground ball. Oh, it's going to be off the bag or off of Evans. And they kind of kick the ball around. But they will keep the bases loaded. For Clay Henderson. Clay Henderson. Clay Henderson, the batter for Purdy here in the 
top of the 12th. Coach Brian Harmon comes out. Looks like he will talk things over with the home plate umpire. He's going to talk to his pitcher, Zane Compton. It's getting late here at U.S. Ballpark here in Ozark. Currently here in the top of the 12th inning of play. One out here in the top of the 12th, but it's as we are tied up here at four. This game started at back in started up at 6:45 tonight. And we are just past 9:30 here on this Friday evening. It's a long, lengthy game between Crane and Purdy here in the top of the 12th inning. One out in the inning. They keep Zane Compton in the game. They got bases loaded with one out. Here's the pitch from Compton. A strike and it is 0 and 1 the count. Nothing and 1 the count to Zane Compton. The pitch swung on and a ground ball to the shortstop. Throw on to first. And no one's going to be out. The routine play. Gives Purdy the lead right back. It's 5-4, Purdy. Five, Andreas up, sends up Andreas Aldaba with only one out here in the inning. These two teams will not go down without a fight. They just won't go away. One team will have to go away here in the top half of the 12th inning. The pitch from Compton outside, and it is 1 1. Five four in favor of Crent, or Purdy, excuse me. The pitch swung on and fouled back for strike two. Bases are juiced. Nowhere to put Andre Saldaba. Here's a pitch from Compton. Swung on, and that's going to be a base hit. That's going to score in two runs. That's going to make it now a 7-4 Purdy lead. Here in, the, here in the 12th inning of play, as this might put Crane away here in the here in the 12th inning, let's see. A crane's, a crane has scratched and clawed all night tonight. As Purdy has already scored three runs here in the 12th. One out here in the inning. It is a 7-4 Purdy lead here in the top of the 12th. So let's see if the Pirates can send this game into the bottom of the 12th inning where they can score four runs to win it. The first pitch there to Travis Hughes is going to be a ball 1-0. and One ball, no strikes. The pitch swung on. That's going to be a base hit all the way to the wall. They're going to hold the runners. It's going to reload the bases for Purdy. And that will send up the batter, looks like, in. You know, it's going to be a foul ball. Strike one there to Travis Hughes. So hold on. So they will keep runners at first and second base. One ball, one strike the count. One out. The pitch upstairs, and it is... Two and one, the count to Travis Hughes. 
These two teams just won't go away. Two balls a strike. The pitch. Strikes as the home plate umpire. It is two and two the count. Now the pitch from Compton inside and it is two and two. Three balls, two strikes to count. Looks like to Travis Hughes. The pitch outside and a walk will be issued. That's going to put runners, or that will load up the bases here in the here in the top of the 12th inning. 7-4 Purdy, our score. One out here in the inning. It is a 7-4 Purdy lead. Here in the top of the 12th with one out here in the inning. J.J. Felipe at the plate. The pitch swung on and a little chopper right to the steal. They get him there at the plate. Are they going to get him? No, they're not going to get him. That's going to be now a 9-4 Purdy lead here in the top of the 12th inning of play. So Crane's really going to have to scratch and claw to get back in this game if they want to claim the SWCL title. Game, title. And ended at 25-3. and three. This could be a tough loss for the Pirates if they were to fall to this Purdy team as they trail by a score of 9-4. Ezekiel Garcia at the plate for the for the Eagles. Here's the pitch. Swung on and a ground ball fouled. And it's 1-1. One ball, one strike the count to there to JJ Philippe, or pardon me, to Ezekiel Garcia. Now it's two and one to count. Two and one to count. The pitch. Strike says the home plate umpire. It is two and two. So in the bottom of the 12th inning, the Pirates are going to have to scratch and claw. And now the pitch. Swung on, and that is going to be fouled all the way to the wall. Two balls and two strikes to count. Getting pretty close to 10 o'clock here on this Friday evening. These two teams have played for nearly three hours tonight. The pitch swung on, and a fly ball. Who is going to get it? Robinson has it, four out number two. So Purdy scoring five runs. Let's see if they can put away the Pirates in the, the bottom half of the 12th inning. Alexis Saldaba at the plate. In a long, lengthy game. You gotta give Crane credit. They have stayed in the battle tonight. Two outs in the inning. Here's the pitch. Strike says they don't play umpire. It is 0 and 1. This game has been long. The pitch swung on and fouled back. And it's 0 2. These two teams have scratched and they have clawed. Nothing in two of the count. Two outs here in the inning. Let's see if Crane can get the firepower in the bottom half of the inning. 
downstairs in the dirt and it's one ball, two strikes. You can tell this crane team has not gone away just yet. They'll have Compton, Evans, and Howard coming up in the bottom of the 12th inning. Here's the pitch. Swung on and a ground ball to, Con to Conrad. Throw on to first. And that's how the top half of the 12th inning comes to a close. But the final hope will come up for the Pirates. They trail by a score of 9-4. Welcome back to U.S. Ballpark here yeah, in Ozark. Pirates are down by five. Wyatt Howard. Wyatt Howard at the plate. Nine five Purdy. Here in the bottom half of the twelfth inning, Pirates have have hit eleven. Have had eleven hits so far tonight. The pitch to Howard swung on a miss. Strike one. Patience at the plate is a big key for these Pirates. It's a long, lengthy, lengthy game tonight between Crane and Purdy. As this game is nearly four, or pardon me, three hours old. The pitch swung on, and that's going to be a little ground ball to the shortstop. Throw on to first. There's out number one. Sends up Wesley Clark to the plate. So Wesley Clark with one out here in the inning. The Pirates have scratched and clawed. They had the winning run on base in the last inning, but they were not able to capitalize. They have tied it, but they have not led at all in this game. The pitch is a strike at 0-1. Oh, one the count to Wesley Clark, the pitch. Downstairs, and it is 1-1. One, one. one ball, one strike, the count. One out to Wesley Clark. The pitch is now one and two, the count. The pitch. Swung on, and that is going to be, oh, right past the shortstop for a base hit. Wesley Clark is going to stop there at first. That will send up Seth Steele to the plate. Steele. So the Pirates are going to have to play small ball. Let's see if they can finally, finally get back into it and end it with a win. Purdy has slapped them around way too many, way too much tonight. Here's the pitch to Steele. It's going to be a ball 1-0 there to set Steele. One ball, no strikes to count to set Steele. Next pitch, it is strike 1-1. One, one. Only one out here in the inning. Here's the pitch. 
strikes as the all point umpire it is. Wait, so that is strike three, so that will send up Koi Esri for the final hope for the Pirates. The Pirates are now their final out of the game. The pitch is going to be a strike there at nothing and one. Nothing and one the count to Koi Esri, the final hope for the Pirates. The pitch swung on and a ground ball. Right to the third baseman, throw on to first. And they get him as the Purdy Eagles knock off the Crane Pirates and they claim the SWCL championship. They knock off the Crane Pirates, four runs on 12 hits. They knock off the top seeded Crane Pirates as they end their season at 24 and 4. The SWCL championship will go to the Purdy Eagles. In a hard fought season. A hard fought season for the for both teams, the Crane Pirates and the Purdy Eagles. A heartbreaking loss for the Pirates.